Oh, God. Just kill me now. Oh, okay, okay. No, I don't want that. I'm already feeling sad and depressed as it is with this year alone. Especially now that it's Christmas Eve. You know, getting ready for it. Well, I'm finally going to review a movie that I barely survived. Especially having to revisit it after all this time for this holiday season. As I mentioned it a couple times already, Surviving Christmas. With Ben Affleck playing an obnoxious, irritating, a perkyish, a smuggy ad executive who just wants to go back for his grievance to to pay back straight to his childhood home where he meets all these unpleasant family and he has to take the willing to pay them a lot of money to buy happiness so now he'd be posing himself as the son of this family that's what the story is all about and I didn't even laugh. Well, maybe I chuckled a little bit, mostly for James Galifondi's performance, who's basically uh, Tony Soprano, only <laughs> a lot tamer, but still raunchier in, in a way. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I did forgot to mention Catherine O'Hara was in this. I mean, hard to believe, seeing that she was in the first two Home Alone movies, not to mention The Nightmare for Christmas, does the voice of Sally. She was in, the, it's hard to believe, she's in three better Christmas movies than this one. And it's really embarrassing to watch her in this, um, as opposed to called funny, God rest his soul. Um, even Christina Applegate, who plays the sister, actually, which I, at that point on, it's predictable because now you know that he's going to end up falling in love with her. Because uh, he actually did have a girlfriend who's a, uh, a very uh, wealthy and rich uh, girlfriend from her family. Yeah, didn't see that coming here. <laughs> okay, well, before I get to this, this particularly review that I'm going to have a hard time with, this was at the time when Ben Affleck was doing some really bad films, no doubt about it, uh, right where he was still, you know, joining in with his ex fiance Jennifer Lopez, or J-Lo for short. It's getting to the point where he was really appearing in so many bad films, rather than good. Even though, yes, he was still in some Kevin Smith movies, you know, like Jane Silent Bob, Strikes Back. He was in Dogma, and all. It was getting to the point where now he's becoming a tabloid, um, toxic waste. So because of that, he was in some, I mean, aside from being in movies that are directed by Michael Bay, like, well, the two movies, that is, um, Armageddon and Pearl Harbor, yeah, he was in films like Reindeer Games, Changing Lanes, uh, Daredevil, uh, G. Lee, which, that's the film that made him, that made him actually one. Well, he could have been well deserved because he was nominated for a Razzie, joining in with Jennifer Lopez and all. All lead to um, to this movie and Jersey Girl, and sadly, even Paycheck, which Paycheck at least was a smart and intelligent thriller. And I enjoy that movie, and I think it's very underrated and definitely a better film that Affleck was ever been in. 
And it probably shows that, yes, he can be a decent actor, and he doesn't end up being annoying like he was acting these days. And that's why I got tired of it. Okay? I never hated the guy, granted. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I mean, when he's in good movies, great films, he's good. He's decent. In fact, he he'll be excellent. But when he's in bad movies, horrible films, enough to make me want to stay away, he's awful. And Surviving Christmas is no exception. I, in fact, I couldn't believe I tried this hard to crack a smile. And I couldn't. The writing was poor. The characters were were shallow, unsatisfying, and Affleck is even worse. And there's even other scenes that try to be more like a dark comedy, or at times that try to be more like a dramatic, uh, sweet, um, harmless comedy in a way, and romantic, but it fell on so many levels. And that's why. Now, um, going back to the history here, once again, this was originally going to be released on Christmas in 2003, because they actually filmed this, believe it or not, two years before it got its uh, theatrical release in October. Yeah, mid-October of 2004, October 22nd, just before Halloween. It eventually became a big flop at the box office. Yeah, I mean, it only made like 15.1 million worldwide out of its 45 million budget. I mean, where did the money went? I'm, that's what I wonder. I mean, 45 million. I mean, come on. You can even tell this movie looked more 5 million than, than 45. I mean, is it because of of all the props that they had to collect or... Or the location, or the, or the craft service, or everything that went into it. I mean, all that food that they actually serve. I mean, I don't understand. Um, and then I heard some information coming from other websites too, uh, or newspaper reports, articles, maybe magazines, um, such as New York Post. Um, I was told that. I, and I couldn't believe this. I heard that that um, by the time they were doing this movie, I heard that uh, Galafundi actually uh, locked himself in the trailer because he didn't like the way the script was written, so they had to do plenty of rewrites. Uh, then I heard that uh, Affleck had brought in uh, Lopez around, and she got jealous of his co-star. You know, Christina Applegate, I guess I don't blame her because, I mean, Christina Applegate is a fox. Yeah, I'm definitely going to say that. <laughs> I mean, come on, she was Kelly Bunny in Married with Children. I mean, I've always thought she was hot. And, and the fact that the, the slapstick, the platforms, all the physical comedy... I'm sorry, man. You know, people started to hate on Christmas with the Cranks, which the original title was going to be called Skipping Christmas, based on the novel by John Grisham. The fact that they couldn't even use the title because of this piece of crap that I'm reviewing right now. It's just insulting. I mean, and also the fact that, yes, Geely was produced by the same company, yes, um... Joe Rolfe's production company, Revolution Studios. That's even more embarrassing than ever. At least with Christmas with the Cranks, which I enjoy and I love. My f One of my favorite holiday favorites. I don't care what anybody says. At least that movie had a heart. There was a lot of physical stunts. Joined by Tim Allen... Jamie Lee Curtis, Dan Aykroyd, 
Cheese Moran, Jake Lucy, Eric Per Sullivan, and all the rest. They were having a great time. I can even tell that the characters, even though they were obnoxious, they were pretty rude. I mean, the way they were acting, but they learned their look. I mean, I do wish they had an apology and so, but even so, but even then, they helped out. They care for them. They're doing it for their daughter since she was going to come back with her fiancé that she just met uh, during the Peace Corps. Yeah, I guess I forgot to mention that, yes, because she was joined the Peace Corps. Um, that's why she met her, her fiancé there. Yeah, and, and the fact that they had to help out, they put a lot of work into it for 12 hours till they finally get it right. So, even because of all the problems that's going around, having to find out that they were skipping the holidays for, for a cruise, I guess at least for them, maybe they would have learned a lesson. But even so, I mean... Uh, both uh, Lufer and even Nora had a heart. Um, it shows he had a heart of gold too by the, by the end of it when he gave it to the neighbor next door that he can't stand. A guy named Walt who's played by M. Emmett Walsh. So. I mean, I, I guess at that point on, yes, they may still you know bicker each other. They, they may hate each other, but deep down of it, you know the old expression, love thy neighbor. <laughs> Get used to it. But compared to the characters in this movie, I just couldn't find any love towards them. I mean, I, you know, I love Christina Applegate. I love James Galfani, God vs. Soul. And I even love Catherine O'Hara, but they deserve better than this. I mean, but it's sad for Galfani, though, because now, you know, because we'll never be able to see him again. But at least he got to be in other good movies, though, after this mess. And he was still doing Sopranos, which at that point on, I think by the time this movie came out, I think Sopranos ended. Yeah. So he went on to do other films in his career before his death. Okay. I know. And... This is going to be an interesting record, but by the time this movie came out, it actually ended up on home video, VHS and DVD, in December, two months after its original release, which bombed badly, and, and they actually took it off cinemas around the world uh, during that the course of mid-November, which at that rate will be replaced by Christmas with the Cranks. <laughs> yeah. So that was a great start. I already knew I was in trouble the moment I saw the trailer. I saw that trailer, and I have assumed that, yes, there are some scenes that were not in the movie. But then there are scenes that were. But they knew they had to cut them all down. I had a feeling maybe this was going to be originally R-rated. It seems to it seems to me like they were going to be that way. I mean, after you know, Bad Santa, you know, which was a raunchy Christmas comedy that's as memorable as it could be, but this one even tried hard and it failed. I guess now we know why this was going to be another place to have this uh, at on the naughty list and have a lump of coal in and so. The movie stars Ben Affleck, James Galifani, Christina Applegate, Catherine O'Hara, Josh Suckerman, Bill Macy from Maud, no longer with us, Jennifer Morrison, who I believe she was in the TV show Once Upon a Time, when she played Emma Swan. She was even in the TV series House, M.D., yeah, which had Hugh Laurie uh, playing House. Um, she's not a bad actress either. Uh, Udu Idu Kier, you know, who was from the movie uh, Suspiria. Yeah, the original Suspiria. Uh, he was also in Blade. 
and many films you know, with other directors. They would sell be Stephanie Ferrice, yeah, because she was from the movie Hocus Pocus. She was in Blind Date, The Great Outdoors, Heaven Can Wait, uh, Sideways, uh, Flight Plan. Uh, Mike and Dave Needs Wedding Dates. Yeah, better movie than this mess, among others. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Stephen Roof was also in that movie as well. Uh, but he was also in Office Space. Uh, he was in King of the Hill, uh, Dodgeball. Uh, I, I also forgot that he was in the TV show News Radio. Yeah, the Phil Hartman series. Uh, with Annie Dick and and all. Cy Richardson, Peter Jason, uh, Phil Lewis, Sonia Eddy, Sean Marquette, and Tom Kenny. Yes, Tom Kenny, the same man who does the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, as well as uh, Heifer on Rockwell's Modern Life. A dog from Cat Dog. Um, also the narrator and the the mayor in the Prop of Girls, among many others. Yeah. It's written by four writers. I can't believe it. Four writers: Harry Elfont, Deborah Kaplan. You know, based on their story, Jeffrey uh, Benamilia and Joshua Sternan. And it's directed by Mike Mitchell. Yes, the same director that gave us Deuce Bigelow, Mill Gigolo, Sky High from 2005, which I love. And I do love Deuce Bigelow and Mill Gigolo. I don't mind that. And Shrek Forever After, which was a decent sequel. And the final chapter, or what's going to be, or what's supposed to be, but they're planning on doing a reboot. And the Lego Movie 2, the second part, which is a good sequel. I actually didn't mind that. But he was also responsible for giving us Alvin the Chipmunks Chipwreck and that lousy Trolls, that overrated uh, DreamWorks uh, animated feature with Timber, Justin Timber Fuckface and Anna Kendrick, among several others. Yeah, fuck that movie. Well, fuck this one, too. Okay, I know. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself for this Christmas. <sighs> just to make me feel better, I'm drinking Diet Dr. Pepper, just what the doctor ordered. So I can be able to finish this <sighs> lousy review. Anyway... The movie begins just before Christmas. We meet a smuggy, cringe-inducing, perkish, annoying, advertising, but very wealthy executive, Drew Lefham, who's played by Ben Affleck, who's joined by his girlfriend, coming from a rich family, named Missy, played by Jennifer Morrison, who surprises her First class tickets to Fuji, hoping that this will be their wonderful time for the holiday season, only to discover that she's horrified that she that he wouldn't want to spend Christmas away from his family, citing the fact that Drew has never even been introduced to his family at all. So at that point on, she dumps him. And didn't want to get very serious about the relationship. And and Drew decided to have his assistant send her a Cartier bracelet to apologize. But desperate to not spend Christmas time alone, he calls he basically calls one of his contests to find a place to stay on Christmas. But he wasn't close enough to have anyone be invited at all. Therefore... He tracks down Missy's therapist named Dr. Freeman, played by uh, Stephen Root, who is just at the airport, you know, ready to go on this trip, joining in with his daughter, which apparently went all the way 
into the x-ray um, you know carrier machine by accident I mean yeah I guess they're just trying to be funny here um, but he was ho actually hoping to squeeze in in a therapy session just when he was on his way but he tells him to actually list all of his grievance and then burn him straight at to his childhood home and that's what he was about to do when he finally found it he began to discover that it's now being occupied by an unpleasant family named the Balcos, which we meet Tom along with Christine, uh, both played by James Galafani and Catherine O'Hara. Uh, we also have their son Brian, um, who's played by Josh Suckerman. And Alicia, played by Christina Applegate, which she'll actually show up later. Tom basically, I think he works um, as a mechanic at a local auto center. I mean, that's probably explains why he was wearing the, his uniform at times. Uh, and Christine is basically a housewife. I mean, she's very busy. But then we both learn that yes, they're they're gonna be settled for a divorce because you know they didn't seem to work out after years of marriage. Their son, on the other hand, just basically stays at home, downloading the internet porn. <laughs> yeah, because he's bored out of his fucking mind, and he's mostly just watching like Asian chicks on online. Um, therefore, they were suspicious of Drew, and when he was setting his grievance on fire, Tom actually brought in a shovel and knocked him out cold. <coughs> they brought him in the house. When he woke up, they were thrilled to see his old room, and Drew actually appendicently offered Tom $250,000 to let him spend Christmas with them and posing himself as their son, <laughs> their older son. But Tom accepts, I mean, without the permission of Christine, but they figured, you know, he, ex he said it anyway and, and they're going to do so. Uh, they were going to kick him out uh, at first, which they did <laughs> for a while. But then when they finally set an agreement on this, uh, Drew's lawyer had came by and drew up a contract that requires the Balcos to, to pose as his family. So the next day, Drew forces the family to go out and buy a Christmas tree together, requiring Tom to wear a Santa cap in public while they're trimming the tree. Alicia arrives for the holidays, being stunned by Drew's presence. He suggested that she could portray as the maid at first, or maybe perhaps his sister, or which I'm pretty certain this is going to lead to a lot of uh, peculiar results and, and more predictability. Because I guarantee you, you know, Tom's going to end up. I guarantee you, though, that Drew is going to end up falling in love with her rather than his um, girlfriend, Missy. They already dumped them. Okay, well, I know. So it just continues to go on with the scenarios here, especially at dinner when Drew writes a script for the family to read at the table, like it's an improv or so. Yeah, see, now it's starting to feel like a sitcom already. So he hires a local actor. So he even hires a local actor to play the part of his grandfather, and that turned out to be. Um, Duda, um, which his real name is Saul, played by Bill Macy. Not what a lame way to call <laughs> their grandfather Duda. Anyway, Drew takes Alicia and her brother Brian um, on sledding the very next day. Yeah, they had to go on one of these huge mountains. All these snow mountains that they go around to to start sledding all the way downhill, and once uh, well, 
And while Brian was out of the, out of the, the table here, uh, both um, Drew and Alicia were sledding down all the way down to the mountains. And then once they stop, uh, Alicia got a cold. She sneezed just when Drew was ready to kiss her. So now they end up having uh, some hot cocoa. You know, so they so hoping that the cold will go away. Anyway, Alicia had shared a childhood memory with Drew about the old tree during an ice storm. So Tom asked Drew to actually leave while he was planning on divorcing Christine. Drew actually encouraged the couple to indulge themselves, which at this rate, Tom buys a Chevelle S, a Chevelle Double S, which is the the car that he had since he was in high school. And Christine decided to go on a makeover by meeting the photographer for some glamour shots. You know, modeling, you know, posing all these uh, sexy, you know, looks and attractiveness around while they play the song uh, Cherry Pie by Warrant. Yeah, you know that song. My, my, cherry pie. So therefore... Drew takes Alicia to the old tree of her childhood, which has been covered in ice again. Uh, this is where they... <laughs> Drew suddenly brings in all the actors around, portraying the, the novelty story. Uh, with the carolers and the choirs and all. Until um, Alicia told them to shut up. And this is where... Well, Alicia just couldn't stand him anymore and decided to move out of out of her life and just having Drew to just didn't want to see Drew anymore and hoping that they'll kick him out somehow. But they don't want to kick him out because um, they are they're waiting for their check to finally arrive, you know, their money. But things just seems to get much worse when because just as Drew's trying to be as annoying as ever and trying to cheer up the family, whatever they can, throwing in some slang gags and unfunny uh, quotes here and there, and the way you know, the way his voice starts, and the fact that his voice is so grating, it's like nails on the chalkboard type that I can't handle. Missy, along with her family, had arrived. Um, which we meet uh, Horace and Lydia, uh, both played by David Selby and Stephanie Ferrisi. Um Because already she did have the bracelet. Um, we begin to find out that since Macy, since Missy already won the bracelet, Drew's assistant informed her that she was spending Christmas with her family. And they wanted to visit the Balco's house with her parents. So Drew promised um, the Balco's an extra 75000 if they'll play along for the rest of the evening. They agreed to pretend to be their family, but things just seemed to go wrong when Alicia found out about Missy and the way and the fact that the family were not getting along somehow and, and the fact that they were shocked when they went upstairs to Brian's bedroom you know looking at uh, porn and this is where they found out about um, the secret uh, behind her backs of Christine uh, showing her her glamour shots uh, on the internet uh, just when of course uh, Duda actually <laughs> Saw him um, last. Uh, we also found out that yes, there was a, another actor uh, posing as um, Duda, and that was his understudy, who was played by Cy Richardson, yeah, the black guy. It's like now you know for sure that <laughs> he just didn't have any choice. And 
I know, they had to go for that, just for fun. So they were all shocked, and this is where they got so mad, they started attacking each other, and next thing you know, they left, and Drew decided not to be with Missy, so it didn't work out at all. And then he was ready to um, to leave, uh, well, until Alicia came by, and, and he was just telling him a very uh, sob story that when he was a kid, he did have a family. We learned that his father left him. His mother works at a local diner, double shifts. Um, he did live in this house, of course. But then, he's been taking good care of him until she died. So now he's all alone, very lonely. His mother actually died during college. He just seems like he's he doesn't have a family at all, in a way. So that's why he's doing this. Or the fact that he's just trying to fool uh, Missy and all. Anyway, he went back to the house. You know, he was just watching um, Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. Um, already feeling, you know, left out until suddenly Tom arrived, um, hoping to get their check, you know, the money that he owes them, and he did. The next thing you know, they went to um, they went to the church uh, for the performance of of. Uh, so then they they went straight to then they found out that Duda was actually performing at a local production of the Christmas Carol. And um, Tom, along with Christine, Alicia, and, and even uh, Brian, had went to watch the performance of, of him playing uh, S Scrooge. So, at that point on, um, Tom and Christine decided not to get divorced. Drew and Alicia had ma made up outside of the theater. While everyone starts to eat at the local diner where... Drew's mother actually works, and the diner that they actually, um, that we, at the end of the movie, which I'm so surprised to find out, is actually the, the Sydney's uh, restaurant that's located at Eagle Rock, California, and as we all know, Ben Affleck is from Eagle Rock, and I'm actually close to where Eagle Rock is at, I mean, seeing that I'm in the La Crescenta. <laughs> so now you know. And of course, because uh, going back to my review of Christmas with the Cranks, I actually live right close to where the that local ranch market used to be, which is now closed down. So. <laughs> okay, I know, I know. Now you're thinking to yourself, like, this is going to be like a heartwarming black comedy with tender moments, some romantic moments. Some crazy moments here and there. Yeah, it tried to be that way. It, was, it tried to be as crassy and raunchy as they could be, even for its PG-14 rating. It failed on so many levels. I mean, it, it was just... I sat there just feeling completely stone-faced, trying to laugh, and I couldn't. I just sat there feeling completely bored, sad, and depressed, and pretty much angry. I mean, angry that I had to waste my time watching this. I mean, I had that problem when I saw this movie a long time ago. And having to watch this now in 2020, it's even worse. But at least I survive. I mean... It sucks, too, because if this movie had, like, a better actor to play the part, like, I could have settled for someone, like, maybe Ben Stiller, if you ask me. That would be perfect if Ben Stiller had played that part. Maybe he would be more understanding, too. Maybe they could have had someone better. Maybe he could have had more meat to the table. Some more meat and potatoes into the script. Maybe it could have had some more um, raunchiness or something, more 
more wacky humor, more um, slapstick. If anything they could have put into this movie, even for a heartwarming, feel-good Christmas movie, this would have worked. But it didn't. And I knew trouble was a mile away the moment I saw the opening, too, was when uh, the, the scenes where we have... A guy was hanging on the ladder, you know, sending up those Christmas lights on, on the window of the apartment, but he fell off the ladder. Uh, there's a scene where an old lady was cooking some gingerbread man cookies uh, that has all these frown faces, and suddenly she was ready to commit suicide by putting herself into the oven. How about the scene where where a, a local uh, man, a businessman, got robbed by this um, charity Santa taking his gold watch, his wallet, the jewelry, all the money. This guy was trying to wrap up a gift and he has trouble wrapping it up. I mean, it's like they're trying this hard to be funny and it's not. I knew I was in trouble. Um, the cinematography was not as, well, let's put it this way, it's, it's as stunning as it could be, but that doesn't make it up for it. The editing is, is typical. Uh, it's poorly written, I mean, given the fact that you have four writers. I'm glad that it didn't get released in 2003 because then this would have been, you know, one of Affleck's worst years, and it was indeed. With, but Paycheck was a better movie, so now I can see why it didn't get released at all until 2004, and no wonder it bombed. Nobody wants to see a disaster in their hands. It got a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a little too high tiny bit and Christmas with the Cranes gets a 5% I mean are you kidding me I mean this movie deserves a lot more like I said it deserves a lot more it should have been a 0% actually just to be fair and Ben Affleck should have won a Golden Raspberry Award instead of George W. Bush I'm sorry but that's a president at the time who was, uh, well, I know people didn't like either. But Affleck could have just won anyway. I mean, he deserved it. I mean, I know it didn't win Worst Picture nor Worst Screenplay because of Catwoman. <laughs> That's why. Oh, boy. It was just boring. I mean, not even the soundtrack could save this movie. Yeah. So I knew I was in trouble. The characters were unlikable, too. I mean, I don't think it wasn't even worth having to see them, either. I mean, there isn't even a single... I mean, maybe a few, but not much. They're not... There's no memorable scenes that, that I could think of. Just pretty lame platfalls and slapstick. Only tiny bits. I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see any chemistry between Affleck and Applegate. Not even Morrison either. I just don't see anything about this. and It, it just wasn't worth it. It's, it's just as it's vaguely unfunny and it's just not worth it not even on Christmas so I would say avoid it so that's surviving Christmas and you know what I will rather survive my holiday season than having to sit for this again if I had to because I swear if if I had to deal with a stranger coming to our apartment and, and posing as, you know, my brother and 
and he's willing to pay, let's say, a million dollars, I mean, will, will I take it? I don't know. <laughs> the fact that he'll probably annoy the hell out of us. I sure wouldn't want that. May, I mean, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, 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 okay. I shouldn't... I shouldn't deal with that. I, I don't want to deal with bribery. Not in my life. And I give the movie zero stars. And it will remain that way. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And hopefully you'll survive. And have a safe Christmas. And I know I will. I mean, even for this year alone. And I'll see you later, much later. <sighs> Bye.